Namo Bhutthaya, this is Abhinav and welcome you. I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from Middle East Courses 94. This is with Ghotamukha, uh, Ghotamukha Sutta, link to the entire discourses given in the description. Uh, so this is basically a conversation between Venerable Udena, uh, who was staying in Varanasi in the Khemia Mango Grove, uh, with Brahmin Ghotamukha, who had, who had arrived for, in Varanasi for some work. Now in this uh, discussion, it's a, like a, a discussion where I'm just taking out the main main points. So basically, uh, uh, Venerable Udena uh, here says to Gotamukha, fourth, basically he gives him the Dhamma talk on four kinds of people who are found in the world. Now this uh, four kinds of people, it's coming in other discourses as well, but I'm uh, mentioning it in this discourse, in this video as well, uh, right? So. What are the four kinds of people? Uh, four kinds are first, person who mortifies themselves. Mortifies means gives pain. Gives pain to themselves, committed to the practice of mortifying themselves. Second is, the person mortifies others, gives pain to others. Third is, who gives pain to himself as well as others. And fourth is, a person who doesn't mortify himself, nor does he mortify others. He is committed to the practice of not mortifying, live without wishes in the present life, extinguished, cooled, experiences bliss which self becomes divine so these are the four kinds of people now uh, uh, basically venerable udena has explained uh, who are those kind of people right so the first kind of people is person who mortifies themselves mortifies and gives pain and this is basically with reference to the you know the jain tradition that was there at that time where the the, the practice uh, uh, and there may be other traditions also apart from the Jain tradition but Jain tradition was one of the traditions whose practice was to give pain to themselves so as to clear, cleanse the bad karma so Buddha had clearly stated and Buddha had even practiced all these Jain practices before his enlightenment and he, he got the realization that they do, do not uh, help one attain enlightenment so they asked, Buddha clearly said uh, that one should refrain from doing such uh, painful practices and follow the middle way neither too much into the extreme ascetic, ascetic practices uh, mortifying practices nor too much involved in the sensual pleasures take a middle path that's why the noble eightfold path that he gave was a middle path right and which we all can do uh, not only mendicants but we as lay people we can also practice this uh, lay uh, the path now the first is mortifying themselves so what is mortifying themselves it's when now, but detailed description is given. Basically, all the extreme practices. Someone goes naked, ignoring conventions, lick their hands, don't come or wait when called, don't consent to food brought to them, don't receive anything. So they have very, very strict laws and rules and, you know, we will not receive, we will not eat for these for extreme fasting, right? Uh, only taking taking the food uh, from from certain kind of households, not from others. They just go to one house for arms, taking just one mouthful or two houses or two mouthfuls. So all these kind of, you know, illogical, very, very painful practices. Eat only once a day, one second day, one up to a week or sometimes even once a fortnight. Uh, so a lot of things are given. Practice of immersion in water three times a day. So they live committed to practicing these various ways of mortifying and tormenting the body. This Buddha was had totally said that if you this uh, if you torment this body, then this is the not right way of uh, uh, attaining enlightenment. So that's the first thing. Then what is the second thing? Come, who mortifies others? That means who gives pain to others. Now these are the people who are like slaughterers, who give slaughterer of sheep, pigs, poultry, deer, hunter, fisher, bandit, executioner, butcher, uh, or jailer, or has some other cruel livelihood. People who have cruel livelihood which may then also extend to people who are doing all sorts of wrong things like having you know business of alcohol and all these things who basically uh, create suffering for others. And then what are they doing by that is the karmic result of that comes to them in when they are reborn, they are reborn in lower realms and they face a lot of suffering. So this is called the person who mortifies the others. Third is the person who mortifies themselves and others. Now this is a person, basically there are some references given of like a, like a person who is an aninto, anointed aristocratic king or a well-to-do Brahmin who builds a temple who, and then who shaves off the head and beard, 
kind of scratching his back with antlers he enters the temple he lies on bare ground stools that means he gives the pain to himself and then that particular brahmin uh, uh, asks that slaughter this many bullocks bulls bullocks heifers goats rams that means asking for animal sacrifice to be done now understand uh, that animal sacrifice was practiced in, in at, at the time of the buddha and that was mentioned in the vedas in the rig veda there are specific clauses where animal sacrifice were done was done to please the gods all those practices buddha said are wrong practices and uh, they attract a lot of kamma for the people who practice right so here the person is himself practicing uh, giving pain to himself and he is giving pain to the other person so that is third fourth is what is basically person who doesn't mortify either himself or others so here the answer was that it's when first buddha says the realized one arises in the world perfected fully awakened buddha accomplished in knowledge and conduct a supreme guide for those who wish to train teacher of gods and humans awakened blessed now a supreme buddha has arisen now a householder who is hearing the teaching or his child or someone reborn in a good family they gain faith in the realized one and they move from the uh, lay life to homeless homelessness right they leave everything and they move and become a part of the sangha and they give up certain things like killing living creatures renouncing the rod and sword scrupulous and kind living in compassion giving up stealing giving up unchastity uh, uh, giving up lying giving up divisive speech harsh speech talking nonsense avoid injuring plants and seeds that means they stop inflicting harm on other living beings right they follow certain precepts like uh, they eat only one part of the day all the precepts of a mendicant right which are contained in the monastic code right so they follow the precepts they are content with what they get uh, they when they see a sight with their eyes so then they follow mindfulness they don't caught up in the features and details right so they they guard their sense faculties right then they have situational awareness while going out and coming back so practice mindfulness and they have this noble spectrum of ethics uh, right and they start meditating and then when they start meditating uh, they give up the five hindrances and everything they get the in the meditation they get the so they are called four jhanas so they get the first absorption second absorption third absorption fourth absorption and when they do that after the fourth absorption they get the three knowledges what are the three knowledges which is again what the buddha got when he got enlightenment first is they recollect their many kinds of past lives second they extend uh, uh, they get the knowledge of death and rebirth of all be sentient beings that means they get the knowledge that a sentient being reborns as per their karma as per the kamma and not as per many other things right then they get the knowledge that uh, uh, they truly understand this four noble truths what are the four noble truths this is suffering uh, the cause of the suffering is craving third this suffering can be ceased and the way to cease the suffering is the noble eightfold path they get that knowledge and they understand that rebirth has ended spiritual journey has been completed what had to be done has been done so basically the arhanship they become an arhanship this is the person who neither mortifies themselves or others being committed to the practice of not mortifying themselves this is the highest this is the best kind of people so when he, when venerable udina said this gotamukha it's like a lamp got lit in his mind with wisdom got emerged and his, he became he said that i am uh, i have i will become your uh, 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 disciple he said don't venerable udina said don't become my disciple be the disciple of the buddha and he said okay uh, i am i will i am going for refuge for life as a lay follower of the buddha so he did not go into homelessness because of his reasons that may be there he became a lay follower of the buddha and then he had some certain money and gold and jewelry so he said uh, i will give it to you udina said venerable udina said no give it for the sangha and you can give it for building the sangha and then there was this assembly hall that built up and it was called ghotamukhi after his name uh, because he donated this amount for the sangha right so this is basically the thing right four kinds of people so what we are learn from this is do not do extreme practices right uh, don't think that they will lead us to enlightenment uh, have live a balanced life second do not harm others do not inflict suffering on others right third is that live a life of a uh, purif- purified mind 
of our conduct should be good uh, we should develop our mind and we should live with wisdom that everything is impermanent follow the noble eightfold path now not everyone can live a, a life of homelessness become a part of the sangha live and buddha never said that that uh, you leave everything and become a, 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 a monastic or a monk or a nun no buddha never said that so in our capacity as a lay person as a lay man or a lay woman we can follow buddha's teachings first thing we, we can start with is the five precepts no killing no stealing no lying no sexual misconduct and no drinking five precepts do some meditation every day right i have made a uh, uh, i have did a like a recorded live session is available how to start on the buddha's path you can search it on my channel and you can find how we, you can start on the path of the buddha so that you can watch right so i hope this video was useful do share your insights thoughts in the comments thank you so much thank you namo buddhaya namo buddhaya